setting up the Ultimaker 3. Normally I wouldn't do this with a 3D printer, but it's actually what the Ultimaker folks want. So I'm going to, when I put it back up, I'm going to clip this and that, and I'm going to take the tape off. But the first thing is, is that this gadget is actually an NFC filament reader. Now, the Ultimaker does not require you to use their branded filament, but if you do, it will detect the filament and it will tell the printer what filament you're using. So the way this is done, I'm going to back this off over here and see if I can show you while doing it. So step one is to hook this thing. That's it. There we go. All right, I'll show you on this side. It is slowly, there we go, going in. Yep, there's a plug. Here. So that plugs in there, like so. This goes in here, and then hopefully without breaking the cord, that goes there. There we go. So I'm going to clip the, uh, the wire ties up here. One. And two. And then I'm also going to remove the tape. There's tape on the heated bed area. Probably see that. Okay, getting rid of the tape. There is packing foam under here. Be interesting to see if I can get it out. There we go. All right, so there's that. And then up here, this is where the two cores go. There's a fan here, a fan here, and a fan here. And there's already a core there. And the reason for that, this is kind of interesting. I'll show this to you up close later, but you can see that this says BB and this says AA, and there's already an AA in there. Why, you say, does it require multiple cores? Well, it turns out that the AA core, which is this guy, is used to print regular filament, PLA, uh, um, ABS, that sort of stuff. This filament, this core, the BB core, is used to fill, to print only support material. So if you're printing, um, you know, a, a regular material, the actual material itself, and a support material, you would have one AA and one BB. If you're printing two types of regular old material, then you would have two AAs. Now, obviously there's no storage thing that comes with this for these things, which you would think, given how delicate they are, they should, but I am pretty sure that somebody's probably 3D printed one in the interim. So I'm gonna put this back, and these little cores snap in, let's go ahead and do this right. Supposed to just to align this one with that one. You guys are getting to see a lot of my head, aren't you? The interesting part about the, oh, I see why. All right, this goes back and forth. See. All right. So what was happening was, if you look at this right here, it's hard to get it in because there's the carry the um, the belt. If you pull it back a bit, there is no belt, and therefore there is plenty of room to slide in a core and then snap it closed. Voila. So we have two cores. We have a spare core, which for the moment I'm gonna put over here, but I will find a delicate, safe place for. This is actually the build plate. And the way that that mounts, safe, yep, is these open up like so. This slides in, and then these little guys come back and clamp on in. So the Ultimaker is finally printing. 
it took quite a while to set up in a variety of different issues. Um, one thing I was trying to figure out was how to manage two different versions of Cura, because I have a version for the Lulzbot and now a version for the Ultimaker, and I wound up just making two installs on the same machine. I am incredibly impressed with the technology and wildly excited to see a production quality machine that does dual filament. And we're definitely gonna spend a lot more time playing with that. With that, I'm David Gewertz for ZDNet and DIYIT's discovery series on 3D printing. There's a little subscribe button down in the lower corner over there. If you wanna see more of these things, go ahead and hit that. And I will see you next time with a lot more on the Ultimaker 3 and dual extrusion printing.